Access Fort Wayne offers reflections of our community. Production facilities provided by Access Fort Wayne are a service of the Allen County Public Library. The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily represent those of Access Fort Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting organizations. For more information about creating your own television program with Access Fort Wayne, call 421-1250. Hello, and welcome to our show, The American Veteran. I'm Dale Parrish, your host, Carl Fowler is co-host. Our guest today is Megan Ross. Uh, she's the Director of Psychologist Health, and sitting in with us and joining us is uh, Connie Douthat. Uh, it was both on our, just our previous show. Uh, welcome to our show, Megan. Thank you. Uh, Good to be here. What is uh, Psychologist Health? Well, uh, the Director of Psychological Health is, uh, it, it's such an awesome program because um, it is it's bringing awareness to mental health issues and, um, and it's allowing people to seek help and not consider themselves weak. Um, it, it's allowing military members to accept that um, it's okay to ask for help Mm -hmm. um, and it's providing a face for them to feel comfortable to seek that help. And um, I am a licensed clinical social worker. I am not a psychologist. That's one thing that I like to tell our members because I often get called doc and I'm not a doctor. So put that disclaimer out there. Um, and one of my biggest goals since I came to the 122nd Fighter Wing um, about a year and three months ago um, has been just getting out there and letting our members know me um, so that they can feel comfortable in talking to me. Sure. Um, so I serve our members on our base, obviously, and their family members are also welcome to come and see me. But we, I am also what's considered a purple program where I cross the lines and um, serve Army, um, Marines, Navy, anybody that's in the area that's seeking help um, I can provide information and referrals for them. Um, I also provide leadership consultation. So if uh, one of our commanders calls me and says, you know, I'm concerned about one of our members, he's kind of acting strangely, um, I can kind of encourage that commander on, on words to say and how to approach that member um, to kind of get them to willingly come and, and talk to me and seek help if they are having oh. a hard time. Um, do you evaluate them or do you refer them to? I do an assessment when they originally come to see me and from that assessment I would refer them out to community resources. Mm -hmm. um, as, as of right now this time our program is in the middle of an evolution. Um, we have recently become uh, government employees uh, technicians whereas before we were contractors so our job description is going to be changing a little bit to where I'm going to be allowed to do a little more on base. It's just not currently there yet. Um, so I do a lot of referrals to community therapists. Um, I, I work a lot with uh, STAR Behavioral Health Providers. Uh, it's a website that you can go to and they are trained therapists. Um, that are trained in military culture, military issues, post-traumatic stress, traumatic brain injuries, those types of issues. Um, and, you know, we're very fortunate to have that here in Indiana. It's only in five states across the country as of right now. So it's at starproviders.org is their website. Um, and you just go in there and you can type in a location and it'll pull up therapists that are trained in these specific issues. We've actually hosted the training on the base last year and we're hosting the second tier of it uh, coming up in May. So, um, and what that is, it's available for any 
therapist, any, um, any civilian therapist that wants to gain knowledge um, and have that experience can come to that training um, and then they can get their information posted on the registry so that they could also be contacted by members or people helping members. Good. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, the guard out there has been deployed several times, mm -hmm. so do you get into the PSTD? The PTSD? Yeah. Um, I can do a little pre-assessment, um, but my position doesn't allow me to diagnose. Uh, so if I do a pre-assessment and I suspect PTSD, then I would send them to a civilian to therapist as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and okay. A lot of that depends. I help them. I kind of help them navigate the system because mental health um, help can be a scary thing for a person that's never Yeah, sought people it. don't know where to look. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, and we don't know what's out there. Mm -hmm. What do I do when I get there? What are they going to ask me? You know, um, so I kind of help them in, in navigating, okay, this is what your first session is going to be like. This is what you need to expect. And mm -hmm. sometimes I'll even help them make that first call while they're in my office because, um, you know, this program is really developed because before members were given a phone number and they were said, you need help, call this number. Well, nine times out of 10, they're not going to call that number because they're scared to call that number or, um, you know, they just don't know what to expect or they don't, they don't want to get kicked out of the military. There's always that fear that if I'm mm -hmm. diagnosed with something and I call this number, then they're going to know about it and they're going to kick me out. Um, so, you know, having me there to help them make that first call and explain to them what to expect and explain to them that, you know, their, you know, service is not in jeopardy. Um, by seeking help, it, it definitely has, uh, it's, it's created a, it's a wellness atmosphere, I guess. You know, yes. we, we work in what's called the DOC, and the DOC stands for the um, Deployment and Wellness um, Center. And, and so all of our offices are located <laughs> down there, and, and it's just a, a wellness environment that the 122nd Fighter Wing truly supports. Okay, okay, you're, so there, you're there just for the ones that are in the service now. Nope, I'm actually available for anyone as well, um, veterans and family members. Um, I can do more with our current members, with the members of the 122nd. I can actually case manage and follow along, make sure that they're going to their appointments, make sure that you know they, they, they like the therapists that they have, and mm -hmm. um, make follow-up contact with them. Now, as far as an outside person or a veteran coming to me, I provide information and referrals a lot, like what Connie can do. There are a ton of services out there, and it's hard to navigate those systems if you don't know, yeah. um, know mm -hmm. what they are. So yeah. having a point of contact like myself or Connie for that um, is, a, is a big help. But uh, veterans, you probably ref just refer them to the VA. Well, not necessarily. No. Sometimes, um, people aren't connected with the VA or they choose not to be connected with the VA for whatever reasons. Um, and, and I have knowledge of what therapists accept what insurances because a lot of people don't realize that therapy is actually covered by most insurances. Um, so, you know, I find out what kind of insurance they have and, and uh, I've even gone to several community therapist office and done um, like lunch and learns where I'll do a quick one hour brief on military culture just to give some of our civilian therapists uh, an idea of what to expect oh. and you know what's different about serving one of our members compared to just serving a civilian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well I imagine both of your positions on base being supported by the base mm -hmm. and so forth this way generates a certain amount of trust. Absolutely. And so as a veteran or service member coming to see you, like I say, he may not, he may be a little scared, he don't know what's out there and so forth this mm -hmm. way. So you have to sort of generate that trust. Yes, and it's an absolutely confidential program. Um, there is nothing yeah. that I share with anyone unless you are a threat to yourself or someone else. Those are the two situations where I am required to report that. It's considered duty to warn. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the biggest things that I've done to kind of build that relationship and that trust with our members is, like I said, I've gotten out there and I'll just go to shops and sit down with our members and have conversations and joke. And um, yeah. I attend roll calls and, and uh, speak with them 
Um, I have a really good relationship with our first sergeants on our base and our chiefs um, because they are usually our frontline people that are going to get sure. that, that are going to so, get the information. So you so, circulate. Yes, absolutely. Among among the active duties absolutely. and so forth. When it's not two degrees outside, I spend a lot of time <laughs> out of my office. <laughs> well, I, I can see the importance of that, and I, I think yeah. that's a good thing to do. Mm -hmm. uh, have a good image and, yes. and friendship yeah. for the people you're serving. Yes. yes. So. Okay. Um, I do also, uh, you, I do provide, um, like you said, I pro provide consultation to leadership, but I can also provide consultation to family members. Um, so with our deployed members right now, I've served quite a few spouses that have called me and um, they said, you know, they're either concerned about um, themselves or another family member. Um, and, and, and it doesn't matter if it's your neighbor or your best friend or your brother or your sister, anybody that is connected to you can call me and I can provide information and referrals and consultations for them. Um, and it can be, you know, a consultation, it would just be, you know, here's my situation, what do you think about this? And or a referral would be, okay, you need a little more help than just a little conversation. We need to, sure. to get you connected somewhere. Yeah. Um, so we also, sometimes insurance is an issue. Sometimes our members don't have insurance. Um, so I also have utilized the Given Hour program, which is an awesome program in the state of Indiana, and I think it's nationwide. I'm not, I'm pretty sure it's nationwide. Um, but those are civilian therapists that actually donate their time for wow. therapy for our military members. Um, and I have utilized that program since we've been, since I've been out at the base. Um, and they're just, it's, it's amazing because therapy is not cheap. And no, uh, if no, your insurance no. isn't covering it, um, for these for these therapists to donate their time, and yeah. it's called give an hour, but they do give more than an hour. Um, do they, they get some recognition for that? Because I was going to say, when you donate your time that way to help a service member, and that there, somehow or other, you ought to be recognized for it. Well, I'll uh -huh. tell you what we did. Uh, the one the one therapist that I've used um, for the give an hour program, he's actually based out of uh, Plymouth, Indiana. We had a member that was out in that area. Um, and he was just like, I'm so excited. I'm so excited that you guys exist. He didn't know that the 122nd was out here. And I said, well, come on out, come on out. And so he brought all the therapists from his office who are all members <laughs> of the Given Hour program. And they actually toured the base and they took them in the A-10 simulator. So it was kind oh, of a yeah. reward for them because yeah. I haven't even been in the simulator <laughs> yet. Um, oh, yeah. Still working on that one. I'm gonna I'm gonna get in there. But um, <laughs> they gave them a tour of the base, and they just I mean they were thrilled. It was yeah. it was awesome for them. So um, and that's part of the the community too is just letting people know that we are out there. It's surprising to see how many people don't even realize that the 122nd Fighter Wing exists. And so um, you know this civilian therapist it military issues haven't been at the front of their mind um, because yeah. it's not something that they think about every day so is that one hour uh, once a month or no um, it's it's based on their treatment plan some people need therapy once a week or um, and, and that's really based on the therapist how much time they're willing to donate okay. um, so most of them I, you know they'll donate yeah. 12 sessions yeah, yeah, or more said, usually. said this one was from Plymouth. I didn't know if you commuted up here. Oh, no, no that. I, no, no, the, the, the service member was close to, closer to Plymouth, mm -hmm. which is quite a distance okay. from here. Okay. Yeah, it yeah. was a, a traditional member that comes here for mm -hmm. drill weekends. And, um, you know, we have members all over the state of Indiana, some outside of Indiana actually sure. so yeah. so i have to be connected with not only fort wayne but um okay. and sure. you know my position the, the director of psychological health they uh the air national guard has now put a wing director of psychological health at every air national guard base um, across the country and what's great about that is that if i do have a member that lives in toledo we have an air guard base in toledo so i can con contact the director of psychological health there, and um, and they can help me with with getting the resources for that member oh, too. Good. Okay. We we've been fortunate to tour the base out there as a group, and uh, we're in awe mm 
mm -hmm. of all the stuff that's out there. And uh, I don't know, it just seems like it's a good asset for the city of Fort Wayne and for the state of Indiana. Uh, but I can see uh, there's lots of airmen out there that sooner or later you're going to find people that need help. Mm -hmm. And you're helping them out, and I appreciate that. Thank you. I, I appreciate the job. Um, it's a dream job for me. It's really, it really truly is. Uh, I, I love what I do. It's a good mixture. Um, like I said, I am a, a licensed clinical social worker. My degrees are, uh, my master's and my bachelor's are both in social mm -hmm. work. Um, and so I'm a social worker at heart. And so to be able to do case management and find resources along with a little bit of short-term therapy is really just a, a dream job and, and to be able to serve these members and their family it's just uh, I pinch myself sometimes is this really my job yeah. <laughs> I know yeah. Connie's heard me say that several times so. yeah. <laughs> you said you you work with the army also mm -hmm. the troops mm -hmm. and you said that the commander will talk to you about maybe some individual you know, the Army is located out here on Cook Road. Mm -hmm. uh, do they know that you're available? They do. Noelle Butler is their family um, assistance director, mm -hmm. I believe that's her title. Um, and I'm, I am um, connected with her, and so she has sent me re referrals, or if she just has questions, um, she'll contact me and say, you know, I've got this guy that I'm worried about. What do you recommend? Okay. And I can provide her with consultation. But we also have the 338th on our base as well. So we are a joint base. We have a few Army members at the 122nd Fighter Wing. Oh. Um, and I have served some of their members that have come over and, and, and needed some guidance and some assistance. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. We do also utilize Military OneSource quite a bit. Um, military military OneSource has been around for quite a while, but they have uh, online services and they also have phone services. Um, and, and with them, they actually can do anything, really. I mean, they do tax services, financial services, oh. but they also can do crisis counseling, online um, chat, phone consultation, community referrals. Um, so if I run into a situation where I have that member that doesn't have insurance that I can't get them connected with, then sometimes I'll utilize Military OneSource for them as well. Um, now I am available 24 hours a day uh, for our members and for our leadership to contact me, uh, but if for some reason they can't get a hold of me or they are in a crisis situation, Military OneSource is always a number that they can reach yeah. as well. And all of this is at no cost to the service Absolutely. member, Absolutely, right? yep. Yeah, that, that's a yeah, terrific uh, asset. Okay. Yeah. May I, I wanted to say one thing about military. <laughs> one source is they actually, if you are currently in the military, you can do your taxes for free through Military One Source. They have a program that you can utilize. Right. And here locally, the Volunteer Center, if you are currently in the military, any service component, they will also set up an appointment with you to help you do your taxes for free. Oh, right. So that okay. is a yeah. service that's a value. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if you have an individual that needs help, do you sit there and talk to them for quite some time or whatever time it takes? To whatever time it takes. Usually okay. it's around an hour, sometimes it's two. I mean, it really just depends on the member and how much they're yeah. willing to share. So well, do, you, do you try to help them or do you just, I do. just, just uh, I don't mean just, uh, try to figure out what what he needs. Yeah, a little bit of both. Uh, I do um, I do short-term consultation, short-term therapy, where it would okay. be, um, if I don't see a mental health diagnosis, if it's just everyday stressors, and they just need help setting some goals and setting priorities yeah. or okay. setting boundaries or something like that, I can do three to six sessions with them in doing that. Um, but if I see a clear mental health diagnosis, then I will refer them out to a civilian therapist. But I definitely don't let anybody leave my office in the middle of a meltdown. I mean, if someone's in my office and they're crying and they're upset or they're sure. angry, 
um, I am going to help them cope sure. with that before we, you know, before I send them out the door. Um, okay. We usually always have a plan in place and then a follow-up plan in place for um, taking care of that member. Okay. Yeah. Say so you're available 24 hours. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you ever have any middle of the night sessions? I have not had any mental, mental, <laughs> mental of the night. I have not had any middle of the night uh, sessions. I have had evening calls. Um, I do have small children, so they they do know when the work phone oh. rings that they have to be quiet, or else I tend to go out in the garage and handle those calls. But yeah. for the most part, after hours, it's usually leadership that calls. Uh, the commanders would call and for consultation okay. advice and things like that. Uh, but if needed, I could come to the base anytime. Um, I don't do any service outside of the base as far as meeting someone at their home yeah. or restaurants yeah. or anything like that. Yeah. Um, you know, just safety reasons. I have to sure, sure. have to meet them at That's the base. That's understood. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, Connie at the last program talked about the Yellow Ribbon program, and I'm also a part of the Yellow Ribbon program where I brief um, family members and, and the member on mental health issues, on resiliency and, and how to get through that time of deployment and the stressors that they should expect and things like that as well. So, um, you know, in, in, as I've said, being there for the, the spouses uh, and their children, you know, how, how well are their, their kids handling the deployment? Uh, uh, so I have met with several spouses and kids and, and even people who aren't deployed have I've met with spouses and kids and couples and you know, yeah. whatever the need is, I'm kind of there. <laughs> Being as you're dealing with a guard unit rather mm -hmm. than a regular, you're dealing with people of all ages, aren't you? Absolutely. Young, young men and women yep. as well as leaders and so forth that have a few more years on them. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, do the... Uh, Officers and the people who have been in the service say longer, they have the same type of problems. Oh yeah, yeah. So uh, so uh, it's it's widespread. It's not just yeah. the first people in the service that you have problems with. Yeah, yes, it's it's widespread. I, you know, and honestly, I think it's the oh thirty and above that I see more of than the young ones. You know the the early in ones that and because I think that as we get older we have more life stressors I mean we take on more responsibility sure. and you sure. know more financial responsibility families children yeah. um, you know yeah. kids mm -hmm. Ooh, yeah they can be a big stressor so yeah. um, you know so I think what's great though is that the, the people are finally accepting that it's okay to get help um, and then and I've said it like I said before it doesn't it's not a sign of weakness. Um, no. And another thing with National Guard members as well is, you know, it's not an active duty base where the spouses live next door to another spouse who has a mm. deployed member. You yeah. know, these spouses may not even know another spouse with, um, with a deployed husband or, or wife and the children. They may be in a school where there's not a single deployed parent in that school. You know, not every you know, that they're active duty when the child goes to school, they're in school with other active duty uh, kids. And, you that, know, so. That, that's changed because back in World War II and our generations of war, the spouses used to get together mm -hmm. and word of mouth, they get to know each other mm -hmm. and they share problems and so forth. But now you're there, so. Like you say, now they're spread over a wider area. They're not mm -hmm. living next to the base, so to speak. Right. So. But one uh, of the things that I do with that is uh, if I have a spouse that comes in that's completely disconnected from everybody, uh, my biggest resource is our volunteers. Um, and Connie heads up our uh, volunteer program. And so I always refer them to our key volunteer team because they're a, a great group of women that are providing support and they have activities that they're doing they're going to be doing the uh, sky zone activity coming up where they're going to bring the, the members of deployed um, the spouses of deployed members and and their kids to enjoy times like that so i definitely i get them connected with connie and with her key volunteers sure. 
Um, and they have Facebook pages that they've created and to kind of build some camaraderie with yeah. that too. So. Now, the spouses at home, do they know that you're there for them? Yes. Because um, a lot of times the, the member himself will probably go home and not say a no, word. The word might not get out. <laughs> yeah, well, as long as they invited their spouse to the Yellow Ribbon program, okay. um, they met me there. But then also on the days of deployment, I was at each of the, um, the takeoffs where I walked around to, I tried to walk around to every family and hand out my card and introduce myself. Um, you know, there are, of course, probably a few families that fell between the cracks that didn't come out that day or that didn't come to yeah. the Yellow Ribbon. Um, but Connie does a newsletter and, and she oh. puts my information in that newsletter for the families. Um, and any opportunity that I get to get in front of families, I, I'd try to do that. I jump on that. So yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Well, we've got a couple of minutes yet. Is there anything that either one of you would like to cover that didn't cover before? I'll turn it over to Connie and let you. Well, she mentioned our key volunteer team and um, we have like 12 individuals who are on my core key volunteer team and they are spouses or mothers who want to be involved with the military and they actually make monthly wellness calls to the families of those who have deployed ones to check on them for me mm -hmm. because I I'm only one person I, I can't make can do it all I yeah. can't do it all exactly yeah. so I depend a lot on them um, and they also, like she said, organizes different events for the families throughout the year to go to. Another thing they're working on is a, a spa evening for the spouses of um, oh, okay. our deployed families. I'll um, be at that one too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. We need our relaxation. Rubbing, el rubbing elbows. Um, but if anybody would like to volunteer to be a member of the key volunteer team or on the Army Guard side, they have family readiness groups. All you have to do is give me a call and we'll hook you up with the right person. Um, the only requirement is that you can um, pass the background check. And if you want to be working with the youth, you have to do a more in-depth background check. But other than that, we are eager to take on volunteers and let yeah. you help us, whether it's in my office or organizing an event. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're that. talking to the viewers now, not just us. I just hope the viewers realize <laughs> They, they can give you a call. They can give me a call. Yeah. Yes, they can if they're interested in volunteering yeah. um, with our Family Readiness Group's key volunteer team. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're yeah. eager for volunteers, all the help I'll we can bet. get. So okay. we appreciate yeah. it. And uh, I, I could not do my job without either my key volunteer team or all the community resources that we have. Yeah. Or like she said, networking with my um, coworkers in other states to help us with sure. families who live in those other states. Yeah. So. Yeah. Or, uh, maybe a one-man shop, but we have a village of people to help us, so. Yeah. Uh, that's important. Yes, it is. I understand yeah. that. But I'm, I'm glad that the help is out there for these people. Uh, I'm sure they need it. And I think maybe in years past they were more or less ignored by the spouses and families and so forth. Uh, they was on their own to cope with whatever but yeah. now they have a resource to help them out. Uh, I'm proud of you gals. You're assisting so okay. forth. Well, thank you very much. Thank oh. you. We sure learned a lot this, these two shows. Uh, yeah. Like I say, if I was active duty, I'd run to these gals and get them to <laughs> yeah. do, some, do something for me. Yeah. Help me out. Help me out. Yeah, you uh, bet. Uh, so. Well, we're out of time. Yeah. Megan, thank, thank you, you for being on the show, and thank you for what you're doing out there. Thank you. Megan, thank you very much. And Connie, same for you. Thank you. We appreciate it. Yeah. From one veteran to another, yes. thank you, Connie, thank you. very much. Yes. I uh, hope you enjoyed the show. There's a lot of information there. Take advantage of it. Uh, you remember, freedom is not free, so if you see a veteran or someone in uniform, just walk up to them, shake their hand, and say thank you for your service. Thank you and good night.